So you want to get a fursuit. Cool. I'm Shadow Raccoon, and let's take a look at the pros and cons and everything you need to know about getting your fursuit. Yay! Before you get a fursuit, I think you need to know what to expect from having one. Yes, there's going to be lots of hugs, lots of jumping around, maybe running around, having a lot of fun, and that's amazing, and I love that, it's one of the best bits. But you do need to know some of the negatives, I think, before we even go down this route. Uh, but firstly, I can't stress this enough, it gets warm. Yes, Furcons will have cooling facilities and special places you can go to cool off, but at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, and no matter how cold, even in the middle of winter, you're still going to feel just that little bit toasty inside. And some people might find that a little uncomfortable. Again, you build up endurance, you get used to it, you'll get past it. It took me maybe a month or so of wearing the fursuit on a regular basis. And now I mildly notice the heat. And that somehow managed to be able to spend three hours in 36 degrees heat a few months back. And that's impressive even for me. But you do need to know that. And again, you need to expect that maybe your vision's going to be a little bit off. So um, some people, that can make you maybe feel a little bit claustrophobic too. Um, I did have that right at the beginning. Um, I was at Jeffy and in the middle of a crowd and I felt like the walls were caving in. And I don't even suffer from claustrophobia normally. But wearing the fursuit regularly got me used to it. So again, when you get your fursuit, expect these things. And, you know, don't be a quitter because just because of those things. But do remember, you're going to have to go through all of that. And everyone does it when they first get their fursuit. Now you obviously know the pros and cons of that bit, it's probably important to consider what type of fursuit to get, and wow, this is a big category. It's also one of the most fun. So you've got partials, you've got full, you've got digit grade, you've got planty grade, you've got toony, you could go for realistic, you can go for experimental. Something like maybe Beauty of the Base. I mean, that's pretty wacky and it's amazing. It's really cool in real life. Um, or even like Pazuzu. <laughs> that's, a, that's an awesome suit too. But you need to pick the one that's going to work for you. Um, don't be afraid to get a partial. I started out on a partial. Uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. The benefits of a partial is you don't get as warm and you can get it on and off really quickly. So you can quickly fursuit up and down. So... You know, don't feel bad if you can't afford maybe a full suit and have to go for a partial, or you just don't want a full suit. Partials are cool, but so are full suits. And planty grade is nice because it's easy to moving around. Digit grade has, obviously you get the really cool padding, and you know, nice thick thighs maybe, but obviously slightly less motion. So if you're a keen dancer, this might not be the one for you. But, you know, don't feel forced into digit grade because everyone else apparently has it. Um, Granted, I say that sitting here wearing tissue grade, um, I really wanted it this time because my last suit wasn't. So maybe that's your choice, but again, don't feel pressured into a certain type of fursuit if you don't feel the need to. And yeah, pick the one that just looks right for your character. I can't stress that enough. Now this is maybe something that you can't do, but if you can, you really should try out someone else's fursuit. Maybe even just try their head on, try the full suit, try walking around for a bit if you can. I mean, I, I know that uh, some of my friends have definitely tried out some of the suits that I have access to, and it's given them a really good insight on whether they want to fursuit or not. And I know at least one person who sort of tried it out and realized that fursuiting wasn't actually for them, and they just wanted to stay without a fursuit. That, that's cool as well. I, but it's good because obviously it gives you that instant feeling of you know how hot it is and what to expect. But again, if you can do that, that's amazing. Don't just maybe turn up and just ask a random for, oh, hey, can I try your fursuit on? That's not the way to do it. You know, maybe just ask nicely or just become friends with them first, you know. And don't steal people's fursuits from the fursuit lounge and wander around in it. That's um, not only a bad thing to do, that's going to get kicked out the con. And you don't want to get kicked out of the con because then you'll be really sad. And I'll be a sad raccoon because I told you not to. So you know what type you're going to get. You know what to expect. Now you need to make sure that you can afford it. And 
Buying a fursuit can cost you more than buying a new car. Um, okay, maybe a second-hand car, but it's not a cheap endeavour, and maybe maybe the most off-putting part. But, and I, I can't stress this enough, if you can't afford a fursuit, don't get one. Um, don't put a fursuit above rent costs, uh, living costs, being able to have fun with your friends and everything else, they matter more. Uh, just save. But, uh, you know, I mean, some makers have payment plans as well, which could really help. So long as you know that you're going to have that money every month to pay them off, then that's great. Um, but, I mean, you could always consider maybe a second-hand fursuit. Um, Furby has some fantastic suits out there, and I've met quite a few people who have brought second-hand fursuits, and they are loving it just as much. I mean, obviously, if you're buying second-hand, you need to, like, get lots of pictures to make sure the suit is in good condition. But, you know, if you don't have lots of money to buy a fursuit, then there's options. And, I mean, really, you can even make your own fursuit. It's... You, there's a tutorials on the internet that the materials aren't that expensive. Obviously, time is. <laughs> your own time will always cost money. Um, and, you know, obviously you've got to get materials to go with it and everything else. But with some patience, you can make your own fursuit if you really can't afford a new one and you don't want a second hand. But second hand's a good option. Otherwise, saving this up for months and months and months is always the way to go. Don't go nuts and don't just get a credit card and max that out. So you know what type you want, you've got all that now down, you know what to expect, you've got the money together, now obviously you sort of need to pick a fursuit maker. And I can't stress this bit enough either, pick a maker that's right for you. Now maybe you want toony, maybe you want realistic, different makers will have different strengths here, and it can make a big difference. Now I mean obviously I wanted like kind of adorable, that's why I went for a Mercury suit. So my suit is made by Mercury Sue, and she fitted all the right boxes. She did everything I love, and I've got these amazingly big paws. But, you know, that might not work for someone else, and that's cool. Don't feel pressured into buying a fursuit from a fursuit maker just because your friends all do that, or you feel like everyone else does that. And don't pick one just to get noticed. It's got to be right for your character. And that's... Uh... Again, I, uh, I wish I could kind of show you how many fursuit makers I looked through just to get the one that worked for me. But it's a fun experience and don't let it be stressful. And again, some might not be open at this point, so be patient with them. And, you know, don't bug them with six million emails saying, when are you opening? When are you opening? It's, it's really important to have a good relationship with your fursuit maker because you want the best fursuit and they want to make the best fursuit for you. So it's that big day. You've just got your delivery of a massive box that's come through the post and everyone's wondering what's in it. And that's awesome. It's your first suit. Enjoy it. Have fun. Go out. Get lots of pictures. Give lots of hugs. Show it off. Put pictures up on Twitter, Instagram, whatever social network's currently in when you're watching this video. But make sure you look after it. Fursuits are not indestructible by no measure, they may be made of like bouncy foam, but it's only got so much tolerance, and you don't want to get tears, rips, damage and that. Uh, it's just simple stuff. Um, get yourself some alcohol spray to keep it clean inside so it doesn't smell. Don't want to be a musky husky, do we? And, you know, it's just simple little bits of care. You will find seams maybe get a little bit loose over time, it happens to everything, but you know, look after your fursuit and it will last you for years. I have met people with fursuits maybe for, who have had them eight years plus and they're still in really good condition because I've looked after them. And that's all I can say. So I hope you've kind of found this useful if you're looking at getting a fursuit or if you've already got one, you just found it entertaining, seeing a raccoon talk about getting fursuits. So. And if you've enjoyed this, why not like the video, subscribe to my channel, or share it with friends. It's really good to get this video out there. Or you can support me on Patreon. Check that one out in the link below. I've got lots to offer everyone, and it just really helps me out here. Yeah. I'm Shadow Raccoon, and thanks for watching this week's video. I will see you next time. Bye!